Microwave. Microwave is the wave associated with moving material particle. Wave associated with moving material particle. And its wavelength, as I obtained the expression earlier, you know, is lambda equals, the expression for the wavelength, lambda equals h upon p and different forms of the wave wavelength we have seen earlier. Macrowave is characterized by a variable called wave function. Wave function is something which gives you the idea of finding the microscopic particle at a particular point in space at particular instant of time. Wave function, in other words, is related to the probability of finding the particle at a particular point in space at particular instant of time. Now, the form of the wave function will be similar to the form of displacement in the case of a caustic wave or the electric field in the case of electromagnetic wave. So the form of the wave function you can see I have drawn over there. It may have a negative value also. Now, when the wave function becomes negative, and since it is related to the probability of finding the particle at a particular point in space at a particular instant of time, the probability also becomes negative. And negative probability is something we cannot think of. It is absurd. And this is why in the year 1926, Max Born gave the correct interpretation of the wave function according to which the square of absolute value of psi the wave function is equal to the probability probability of finding the particle at a particular point in space at particular instant of time now and what do we talk in terms of probability in quantum mechanics, you know, because in the microscopic domain, nothing is certain. Everything is uncertain. This order of uncertainty is very small and, you know, is of the order of 10 to the power minus 34. But still, we take into account this order, this uncertainty. And by this, you can imagine how precise the quantum mechanics is. Quantum mechanics is a very precise mechanics and if you compare it with the classical mechanics or Newtonian mechanics. Now the wave function in order to give some correct result should have, should be satisfied some conditions. What are these conditions? We'll see one by one. It's only when a wave function satisfies these conditions, it can be applied on the basic equation in quantum mechanics, which is Schrodinger's wave equation, either in time-dependent form or in time-independent form, may give a meaningful solution which will be acceptable to us. Now, the first thing that we have about the wave function is that it should be normalizable. Okay. What does it mean? Let us see. Number one, wave function should be Normalizable. Wave function should be normalizable. What is this normalizable or normalization? Actually, if we talk about a particle which is a real one, a real particle does exist at all. And if it does exist, it can be found over minus infinity to plus infinity anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity. Yes or no? If the particle does exist at all, it has to be 
anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity. And therefore, if we look for the probability of finding a real particle, what should we have? The expression for this may be written as probability dv minus infinity to plus infinity is equal to 1. And this means we can take it as since probability is equal to the f square of absolute value of psi, so we can write it as this. Well, if a wave function satisfies this condition, it is said to be normalizable. Because it, it is true for a real particle. If the particle does exist at all, it has to be anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity. Yes or no? Particle can be found anywhere between minus infinity to plus infinity. And therefore, probability of finding the particle between minus infinity to plus infinity should be 100%. If it is 1, this is 100%. If it is 0.4, it is 40%. If it is 0.3, it will be 30%. Just take the case of another example. Suppose there is a, there is a bead, there is a stress, uh, string stressed between two points, and a bead is there. A bead in which hole is there through which the thread passes, and this bead can slide along the length of the thread. Let this point be x equal to 0 and this point is x equal to L. On, the, on either side, it is constrained. That is, when this bead can slide between these two points only, x equal to 0 to x equal to L. Now, if I write an equation similar to that for this bead, what should this be? Condition of normalization for this bead will demand that this is equal to mod of square of psi, integration of mod of square of mod of psi times cx integrated over x equal to 0 to x equal to L should be equal to 1? Yes or no? For this bead, this is the condition for normalization and this is what we mean by normalization. That it has to be, if it is a real particle, it has to be somewhere, somewhere between the given points. Now, the constraints or the restriction imposed determines where the particle should be, between which two points the particle can be found or it can move. Okay, so first condition is that the wave function should be normalizable. Second condition is that wave function should be continuous across the boundaries. What does it mean, let us observe? function should be continuous across the boundaries. Well, let us consider a boundary which separates two regions. In the reason one, this is how it is. The wave function crosses from region one to region two. Continuity of the wave function demands that at the boundary, the slope of the wave on either side should be equal. What does it mean? That if the wave function is continuous, the probability of finding the particle at this point and this point on the two sides of the boundary should not vary much. 
there, there may be a little variation because you know wave function size related to the probability of finding the particle at a particular point in space at a particular instant of time. Now, if the slope changes on either side, what will happen? The probability will change abruptly. If there is an abrupt change in slope, the probability of finding the particle also changes abruptly, which is not correct. So, this is what we have. Slope on either side should be continuous and continuity of the wave function across the boundary demands that del psi 1 over del x this should be equal to del psi 2 over del x this gives you the slope and this is true for all the three regions del psi 1 all the three coordinates del psi 1 upon del y should be equal to del psi 2 upon del y and del psi 1 upon del z should be equal to del psi 2 upon del z. This is what we mean by the continuity of the wave function. And the third one, the third condition the wave function should have satisfied is that the wave function should be single value. Wave function should be single value. The wave function psi actually is a function of x, y, z and t. Wave function itself is a function of x, y, z and t. So if the wave function, if we observe at any point, it should have a single value. That is, probability of finding the particle at a particular point in space, that is for a particular value x, y and z, and at particular instant of time should have a unit value. Do you get my point? The probability of finding the particle at a particular point in space at a particular instant of time. See, if it is at a given time, 40%, it will be 40%. Simultaneously, it cannot be 40% or 50% or 40% and 80%. It has to have a unique value. So this is what we mean by the single valueness of a wave function. Now, if a wave function satisfies these three conditions, there are more, many more for what is, what is the condition for orthogonality of the wave function, but that is not material here. We are concerned with these three primarily. And if a wave function satisfies these three conditions, the wave function is said to be a well-behaved wave function. It is said to be a well-behaved wave function and such a wave function when applied on time independent or time dependent Schrodinger's wave equation can give a solution which is meaningful and acceptable. So this, these are the three conditions for the wave function to be well behaved. Is that okay? Yes. You can you can take down after this. If a wave function if a wave function satisfies if a wave function satisfies Above mentioned three conditions, above mentioned three conditions, it is said to be, it is said to be a well behaved wave function.
well behaved wave function and such a wave function when applied to the basic equation in quantum mechanics Schrodinger's wave equation solution meaningful solution acceptable to everyone next we proceed to derive the basic equation, Schrodinger's wave equation in time independent form as well as time dependent form. So first we'll take up the case of wave equation, Schrodinger's wave equation in time independent form. And we begin with uh, the form, a complex form of the wave function. Because the wave function may be real as well as complex. So if you take the complex, complex wave function, complex form of the wave function, it will have a real part as well as complex part both. So let us use the complex form of the wave function to derive the Schrodinger's wave equation. Just a minute, let me rub up the board first. We begin with the we begin with the complex form of the wave function. Schrodinger's wave equation. Let the, let the wave function have a complex form. minus i omega t minus kx a is the amplitude of the wave function amplitude omega is the angular frequency and this is equal to 2 pi nu where nu is the frequency t is the time k is the propagation constant And this is equal to 2 pi over lambda, lambda being the wave associated. And x is the position. x, we are actually observing the wave along x direction. If it had been along y direction, instead of x, we would have used, we would have used ky. For z direction, we might have used kz. Okay. So, this is the form of the wave function. Now, let us make use of that fact. Omega equals 2 pi nu and k equals 2 pi over lambda. So, what do we get? Psi equals a exponential minus i 2 pi nu t minus 2 pi over lambda times x. 
क्यों कॉन्फिडेंट है क्या एक्सपोनेंशियल माइनस टू पाई आई न्यूट्री माइनस एक्स ओवर लैम्डा वेल अब द वेव फंक्शन इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू नो फ्रीक्वेंसी एंड वेवलेंथ बट इट इज ओवर beneficial to express the wavelength in terms of energy and momentum of the particle because we are always interested in finding the energy and momentum of the particle so let us explain the same wave function in terms of energy and momentum now you know that energy equals how much energy You can you can write this. It is always advisable. It is always advisable and beneficial. It is always advisable and beneficial to. Express the wave function in terms of energy and momentum so we write energy equals h nu And this h nu we can write as two pi h cross nu. You know what is h cross? H cross is h over two pi, and it is also called the Dirac constant. Dirac, D I R A C. Dirac was the scientist. It is also known as Dirac constant. H cross, h cross is equal to how much? H over two pi. So. If you write frequency, frequency we can write in terms of energy as what? E upon two pi h cross. Again, wavelength lambda. You know, wavelength lambda is equal to h over p, and this we can write as two pi h cross over p. H cross is h over two pi. So two pi cancels out. Now we can utilize these two. This and this will be utilizing here in this equation. Let us write psi. We can take write as a exponential minus two pi i. For new we will write e over two pi h cross. Times k minus x over two pi h cross over p. P goes up. Two pi cancels out. The sign we can write as a exponential minus i h cross. We can take common e t minus p x. Let it be in question number one. The form of the wave function: wave function in terms of energy and momentum. Wave function in terms of energy and momentum. Now we proceed to derive time-independent Schrodinger's wave, wave equation. Time-independent. Schrodinger's wave equation. It will take five minutes. Time independent. I'm going to be like that. Time independent. Schrodinger's equation. Okay. Now. Observe if we are not taking the dependence of wave function on time, we can do away with this term. So wave function psi takes the form ps 
So I will take the form a exponential minus i over h cross. And yes, it's take minus a lot, is it? Is it? If we neglect time, we are, we are talking about time independent Schrodinger's wave equation. The wave function does not depend upon time. So we can throw away with the time term. And that is what we have done. Time, we have taken away. We are left with this. Now, let us find out del psi over del x. Del psi over del x will be how much? Ip over h cross a exponential i p x over h cross and del square psi over del x square this is equal to i square p square over h cross square a exponential i p x over h cross del square psi over del x square we can write as i square is minus 1 minus p square and this is psi so minus p square psi over h cross square and p square psi therefore we can write as minus h cross square del square psi over del x square okay let it be equation number two Now the total energy of the particle, it is always sum of the kinetic energy and potential energy. If we do not take the relativistic consideration, relativistic means the velocity approaching the velocity of light. In that case, we have to make use of relativistic consideration. So if the velocity of the particle be small, we can take for small velocities, total energy is equal to kinetic energy plus potential energy. Yes or no? Yes. Total energy let us take as E, kinetic energy let us take as P square over 2L, and potential energy let us take as V. It's a simple thing. Multiply both the sides by side. P psi will be equal to P square psi over 2A plus P psi. Is it? P psi equals P square psi over 2A plus P psi. Do we have? And you can put for P square psi from there. I'll be writing this side so it's not be visible in the speaker. So let me write one step here this side. P psi is equal to P, what is P square psi? Minus h cross square del square psi over del x square. 2 m is also there. Plus B psi. Or h cross square upon 2m del square psi over del x square plus p minus b psi equal to 0. We can also write it as del square psi over del x square plus 2m over h cross square del square psi over del x square, sorry, e minus v e psi, this is equal to zero. This is Schrodinger's wave equation. Time independent Schrodinger's wave equation in one dimension. And you are familiar with this equation. You might have used somewhere that plus two level. Yes or no? Yes, sir. And this is how we get it. Time independent Schrodinger's wave equation in one dimension. And you know how to use it? We'll talk about some more form of the wave function. But before that, let me tell you one, one more thing. How to use it? 
we will be defining the form of the psi. What is the form of the psi? Or other potential function. We define the form of the potential function V related to a given problem. We apply it on this equation, find its solution, and that solution should be, if the wave function is well behaved, you'll be getting a meaningful solution. Is that okay? Yes, sir. So that's all for today.